Oh, I got my good hat on. Well, good morning. It is June, June, silly me, July 13th. Okay, uh, as I said, it is July 13th and we're going to desiccate the canola. Uh, so we can hopefully harvest it this week. We'll see the weather looks a little catchy near the end of the week. I have to wait minimum three days after I spray this product. So anyways, sprayer's loaded up. Gonna head to the field and uh, I'll talk to you when I get there. Okay, we're in the canola field spraying. Uh, a little bit of an oopsie when I started. I had it on manual rate control and not automatic. So just a sliver little too light on chemical around the outside but it shouldn't be too bad because I'm using a higher rate anyways uh, so we should be okay but I say for the most part the canola looks pretty good uh, quite variable as you can see from the drone footage in that uh, video I did earlier uh, this week or whatever day I get this video out uh, but it's titled I'm back but this is what I see We're using a fair bit of water uh, that carries the chemical uh, so we're putting on 30 gallons to the acre pretty much 28 I believe is what it is uh, just to get better coverage of the chemical to get more of that tissue covered so that uh, we can get rid of the green in it so we can combine it so uh, it's pretty tall it's up to the bottom of my sprayer belly I'll uh, maybe hop out here and take a take a shot of it when we get over to uh, another side of the field but I got a turn here so I'm gonna sign off okay I'm going straight again uh, the one thing I am seeing is we're getting pretty good pod chatter uh, in the sprayer tracks which you can't avoid because we're basically tearing the tire through the canola here to split it apart to get through it so I'm not surprised to see a fair bit of shatter and on the headlands when I turn uh, you know it's not ideal but it's just kind of the name of the game I could put crop dividers on a sprayer like this on the front wheels so that as you're driving through uh, it splits the crop apart but as I said this stuff is so knotted or knitted together that you're tearing it apart whether it's a wheel or a crop divider so I don't know for the little bit we got to do here I think it's just kind of part of the harvest loss we got to deal with but for the most part, because I am able to run my auto boom height up and down, it looks after itself. The booms aren't getting into the canola. Because if we ever did a big swipe of the boom through the canola, we would shell all the stuff. The boom hits, so we don't want that either. But uh, let's keep picking away here. When I get over to another spot, I'll hop out and just show you how tall it is. Hopping out and. Uh, my ladder won't even go down because uh, canola is holding it up. So it'll probably shatter some pods in that little area. Oh! But yeah, this is it. This is uh, one of the better spots, which is a typical farmer. I'll show you the good spots, not the bad spots. But looks pretty good. So you can see how tall it is. My sprayer, if you look at it here, underneath the belly pans, it is 70 inches tall. So it's almost six feet tall. So this canola probably is about five to five and a half feet tall, which is kind of insane. So this is kind of what it looks like inside the field. I said I wasn't really able to get into it yesterday. But, yeah, crazy, crazy tall. We've got a little project here on the farm. And uh, we're trying to monitor pests, uh, insects, uh, specifically an insect called Western Bean Cutworm. 
and uh, it can be very devastating in corn. Uh, what happens is the moths come in and they lay eggs on the leaves of the corn plant right around tassel time. And then what happens is uh, the caterpillars, the moths lay the eggs, they come out as caterpillars. The caterpillars go up and uh, they'll eat the pollen uh, coming off the top of the corn plant from the tassel. But what happens is they go down and they get into the cob of the corn plant and they'll just chew it. And what happens is, is it causes a kind of like a wound uh, in the corn cob and then fungus can get in. And that fungus that can get in is the one that causes toxin. So we don't want toxin in the corn. So uh, what we do is we have to monitor the populations of the moths and look at moth flight and peak moth numbers. And what these little green contraptions are, are pheromone traps uh, for the Western bean cutworm moth. So what we have to do is, uh, this is kind of the top part of it, and there is a little white lid here and we pop that off and it's uh, part of this basket. And what we do is we put a pheromone in that basket and that pheromone attracts the moth uh, when it's nearby the field. And then uh, they tend to fly into this here. And what we do is have an insecticide inside this bucket and it kills the moth. So what we're doing is basically collecting moss in the a moth, the moths that fly by in these traps and uh, it lets us get an idea kind of when peak moth flight is and then we have to go into the field and scout for the worms or the egg masses. So uh, if there's no moss, then we technically really don't have to scout much, but if there's lots, then we have to do some scouting. Uh, these traps and the numbers that we collect here once a week are gonna be part of a bigger uh, set of data that's being collected and we'll be uh, adding our trap numbers to the, the, the provincial numbers and we'll see kind of where the moth flight is at. So we just have to get these pheromone traps put in and the insecticide put in to kill the moths. Hello Jessica. <laughs> and that is what the moth looks like. It's kind of blurry. Can you tap the screen? There, there it is. Go. So that's the moth. So, this is a pheromone. Open it up. It's a little gray thing. There. And that goes in this little basket here. And then we close that off. Then we take this, which is the insecticide. And I really don't want to use my teeth to open this up because it's probably not good. <laughs> don't want to get used to scissors or something? Can you give me a knife? Yeah. Please? Change the camera. Try to keep it out of the window. Okay. So we got the pheromone in and this is the insecticide here. So we'll put this up near the top of the pail because as these actually can get full of moss. So we want it high enough that it doesn't affect the, um, the, the insecticide and make it less potent, I guess. So that trap is done. And then we actually have to go out in the field, hang it off a post that's um, so that the trap's four feet off the ground. We'll do it with this one as well. So we have two traps, pheromone. And a little basket. Insecticide. that I've never heard of before. Put it on the inside again, like so. And this trap's done. So what the goal is that next uh, Monday, 
we'll go out and see if there's any moss inside the trap and we'll count them, put the numbers up to the website and then we'll empty the moss out of the trap and we'll come back the following Monday again and count and do that for the next little while. The pheromone uh, that we use here in the traps are good for three weeks. I have more. The insecticide is good for the life of the trap. So uh, basically three weeks from now we'll have to put a new fair Battery died. Back at it. So we're going to go put these traps up on a couple of posts in the edible bean field. They're good for corn too. Both uh, crops are affected by western bean cutworm. Corn, it, they chew on the cob. Uh, and edibles, they actually chew on the bean pod and cause quality issues in the edible bean. So we're actually putting these up in the edible bean field, but they'll help us make decisions around corn too. So here we go. Okay, we're in the white bean field across from the home farm. And uh, I did spray these, but the chemical didn't work very well. Struggling with chemicals this year, just with the dry weather and the hot weather, they're not working very well. They uh, get to a point where we call it the toughen off. And then uh, really it becomes a, a, an issue where we just call it revenge spraying. And all we were trying to do is set them back enough that the uh, edibles can get ahead of them. But um, some died, some didn't. But uh, these are just starting to flower. There's a prime example, there's a weed patch there that didn't die at all. Frustrating. The uh, weed shouldn't impact the, the beans too much. It's more of an issue of harvestability. So uh, we'll just have to make sure we do a good job desiccating this crop before we combine it so that uh, the weeds aren't a problem. But they look pretty good. The rain really helped them out. Uh, it's uh, considering that we almost got two inches of rain, the fields are dry already, but about uh, knee high. So when you look at the flowers, you can see white ones here and yellow ones there. And the yellow ones have already basically pollinated and started to form a bean. So if I grab this, it kind of falls off already. And there's a little bean. You can see where I pulled it right Oh, I can't, it's hard to see, but right there basically. So we have to spray this field with a uh, fungicide now to protect it from white mold because they're very susceptible to white mold and we have white mold in this field uh, historically. So that's a job for the sprayer this week. Just another job. It's already like cracking again. Oh, I know, it's dry. <laughs> I can stand up on here with the... Sledger? Yeah. You want to just hold on to that? Mm -hmm. I'll try not to miss and beat you. That would be ideal. To miss. To miss? <laughs> not hit me. Probably pretty good, eh? Mm -hmm. How are you hanging it? Check out the string. Kid. No, but like... Through the holes. Oh, I see. What hole are you doing it? Top one, probably. Oh, well, they thought they smelled like chemicals or something, but they don't really smell like anything. Four feet would be about up there, you I have think? a tape measure. Really? <laughs> you brought a tape measure? Fell on your lot when we went off-roading. This is five feet here. Four feet's like down here. There? Yeah. Where's four feet again? I don't think that low. <laughs> Yeah, right on it. Right there? Mm-hmm. Tiny lot to be 
safe with these. Yeah, I wouldn't trust this if it's windy or anything. You don't need one in the field beside us? Yeah, we'll put one in. There are two. How many do you have? Two. I thought we were playing one at Grant's. No, they want them kind of by each other. Oh. Alright. Next field? Yep. Just me and my buddy old pal. How tall is it? I'm 5'10. That's how tall so, it is. Yeah. Six pretty, foot? Probably. Gnarly, dude. Alright, world, I'm supposed to tell you what we're doing. So, we're gonna put the duels back onto this tractor. Um, because we took it off for side dressing. And. I don't know why we need them back on, but now we need them back on. <laughs> so, we're gonna do that. I'm very bright, I'm sorry. It's really bright outside and I forgot my hat today. Uh, that's a tractor we're changing, obviously. I think I said that. Perfection. I told the world what we're doing. Good afternoon. It's Wednesday afternoon. Someday in July. Believe it is the 15th. Five days to Jess's birthday. Oh, and she'll be 18, an adult. Scary. Anyways, we're here at the grain system that we have, uh, getting it prepped for winter wheat harvest and kind of doing an annual clean out, which uh, would be my first annual clean out because I haven't uh, had this system running for too long. We got it going about this time last year actually uh, for weed harvest. So we are just trying to get everything ready to rock and roll so it's good and smooth. But if you look down here, all the way along, I got all the grates off the pit. And this pit here is where we receive the grain. So we come in with the wagons and uh, right at the pit here, open the doors, it falls in. The conveyor right down there drags it up over there, as you can see, into the leg and then it goes to whatever bin I select in the distributor or consigner or whatever you want to call it. So what happens is over the, the year, I've cleaned this out before, but usually what happens is you get just a lot of dust buildup and crud that starts to sick in places. And I figure it's probably warrants just some time to clean it out before we get going. So if you can do this once a year when it's warm, too warm actually, uh, it's a little nicer than trying to do it in the winter time when you're freezing. So we have some issues with some water in the pit and I'm just going to flip the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at. So uh, these two bins here, uh, this one we will be using for wheat. This one actually has some corn in it still and we have some issues with this one because the holes in the bin are plugged right now with uh, a little bit of a bad spot in the bin not a big one like it's very small it's just enough that uh, as you suck grain down the bin it kind of tapers in and it gets sucked to the holes and it is plugged so not hard to fix we just have to do that here uh, we might work on that tomorrow what happens here is basically these two uh, bins unload into this conveyor they kind of drop down into this hopper here 
into the conveyor and it's conveyed same way the pit is up into the leg. So this conveyor that's down here that catches the leg and these two bins and actually gets the dryer bin right here uh, and that's the bin we use for our dryer. It's a GSI top dry. I got a video on it if you're curious to see what it does but uh, it drops into this hopper here as well and goes up into the leg. So this area uh, is usually covered with uh, those grates over the pit so that the grain can fall through. Uh, but these corners here and here are covered with those bigger steel plates. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get everything off, but uh, it's just to me, I like to have stuff kind of clean. So I'm gonna hop down here a second to give you an idea kind of what it looks like, but uh, there's paddles there that you can see right here and those paddles are what drags the corn it drags it on the bottom and it falls through the top so the top is just where it comes back around and the bottom actually drags the paddles on the bottom drag the corn along the bottom of the conveyor and up to the leg and that's what kind of comes through here is the bottom and there's paddles down there so I kind of swept this all down. You can see it's kind of rusty. I haven't decided if I'm gonna to try to paint it or just leave it because the problem is if you paint it, the paint's gonna wear off anyways, but uh, it does get rusty and then dust sticks to it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we're trying to sweep it all down so it's not as dirty as it was. But that's kind of what I'm working on. Jess was here and Sandy, they kind of took off. It's late in the afternoon uh, and I'm just kind of picking away at this on my own. I'm gonna leave it uncovered tonight uh, we're going to probably try to get a trash pump. Oh, I didn't show you what I was going to show you. No matter how well you have this weather sealed, and we don't have it very weather sealed, trust me. Um, you get water down here and crap. So we had an issue last year where corn didn't really go where it was supposed to go. And it fell into this hole outside the conveyor. And then snow gets in here and water gets in here. So that's all a soupy, corny, rotten, stinky mess. Those who have worked around grain will know how badly this smells. So what I want to do is get a trash pump. I will just pump it out uh, somewhere off uh, out of the way so it's not kind of going just out here on the gravel. Probably get some holes either to go out that way or we'll go out that way, I'm not sure yet. But uh, I'll bring the water, a water tank over here and we'll just kind of flood it, pump it, flood it, pump it, and we'll try to get rid of all this corn and make it nice and clean. And then I actually want to put some ventilation in it so that it doesn't, it dries out a little bit more. Right now it's kind of stagnant. This is kind of the access. But um, last year we had a whole bunch of corn pile up in the corner here because uh, this wasn't quite done right. But that's what we're working on. And I also cleaned up the generator room. So we're just in the grain handling room here. Jess cleaned it up the, here today, swept the floor. She's really good at keeping herself busy, which is nice. I don't really have to tell her what to do. She just finds a job and does it. So still got to finish our room in here. I want to put a raised cot up here and then storage underneath. This is where we're doing our grain sampling. And this here is a new toy I got, and I'm pretty excited about it. This here is our old moisture tester. And this is a brand new one we got that will do uh, a lot better job than we've been doing. So what this is, is a Perton's, a Perton moisture tester. And it's a kind of the standardized moisture tester that our Canadian government uses for uh, our grain act or to kind of for commercial grain uh, moisture testing so if there's a, a dispute between a farmer and a grain elevator uh, their sample can be sent to the grain commission here in Canada and they will uh, basically adjudicate the dispute and whatever they come up with uh, for their decision based on their testing 
is binding. So the farmer and the uh, grain elevator has to accept the outcome. So it's kind of a sidetrack on our, how our grain system works here in Canada, but they, the Grain Commission uses a Pertins, a Pertins uh, moisture tester. Uh, this one is the farm version. It's not quite as fancy as the other one, but it's just uh, the same unit. Just takes a little bit longer to do the sample, and it's still quicker than my old one. I won't get into this today, but uh, we're pretty excited to use it. The nice part about it is it has all the crops we grow in it. Uh, I, the old one behind me, the Dickie John there, uh, only had kind of more Midwestern crops. Corn, soybeans, wheat. Uh, the Pertons here has black beans, white beans, azuki beans, oats, barley, uh, all the different wheat classes that we have. Canola has been added to it for me, so it's kind of nice for me to be able to get a good sample of moisture for canola. Corn and soybeans, so, uh, and it can do it a little warmer, so as we're drying, we can do sampling sooner, so. Uh, for how much it costs, I figured we can probably get our money back just knowing that we're doing a better job drying the corn and not over drying and taking the crops off with the right moisture so that's a new toy i'm pretty excited to start using it and it's very simple so it's not going to be a learning curve a big learning curve for anyone using it but anyways i think we're gonna wrap up uh, this video we're really close to harvest people are just starting wheat harvest around us today some of the wheat that was planted but a week ahead of ours uh, so we're not just quite there yet. They're talking a little bit of drizzle coming in tomorrow, which I'd be fine with. And uh, we'll probably, hopefully, 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 be at Canola either late Friday afternoon or Saturday. And then from Saturday, we'll roll into wheat on Sunday. And we'll just kind of see where life takes us. So hang on to your hats. Harvest is around the corner.